preseason is over, the 53-man roster is set, and now we're just 12 days away from the season opener against the New York Giants. Welcome back to Broncos Country Connected. Saturday night, the Denver Broncos hosted the LA Rams for their preseason finale at Empower Field at Mile High. For some, it was about taking the final step in the rehab process by playing at full speed before week one. For others, it was about making one final impression on this Broncos staff in hopes of making the 2021 season roster. And a very pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to Empower Field at Mile High. Final preseason game of the 2021 year with the Denver Broncos hosting the Los Angeles Rams. We're seeing some guys that we haven't seen at all in the preseason, and we didn't see Von Miller at all last year. This is really the first action for Vaughn since 2019. Perkins in a shotgun. Here comes pressure on him. Perkins will be hit, and he's grabbed and sacked outside the 35, and that was Josie Jewell. Good to see Teddy he made some good throws on this drive. Looks more decisive, a little bit more focused. Bridgewater now steps to his left, throws a ball that is going to be caught in the end zone as a Broncos touchdown, and that is Cortland Sutton. Sutton went down to cradle the ball about eight yards deep in the end zone. He's going to be hit and sacked back at the 45-yard line. Locks in the gun. He throws to the end zone. Pass caught. And that is a Denver touchdown. The Broncos have beat the Rams 17-12. They wind up 3-0 in this preseason. Well, the Denver Broncos had an overwhelmingly amount of talent on display throughout the preseason, but unfortunately they cannot keep everybody. So thankfully we have James Palmer here from the NFL Network to help us break down some of the Broncos roster moves made overnight and early this morning as well. James, thank you so much for being here. Oh, this is a pleasure. Well, we have to start with a couple of trades. The Broncos sent Trinity Benson, the wideout, to Detroit. They also acquired Jonas Griffith from the San Francisco 49ers. So what do these trades say about George Payton and his philosophy around building a team. Well, Alexis, it tells us he wasn't lying, right, when he said the more picks you have, the more darts you have to throw at the dartboard. And that's the way he has always been when he was in Minnesota. It's the philosophy that he went and learned over the years to where if you hit on two-thirds of these picks and you find some guys, like we'll mention some later in the draft, in each of these years, you're going to be able to always find ways to make your roster deeper. You look at Trinity Benson and this wide receiver group where there were teams calling about trades because they were so deep and they had so many guys there. Trinity Benson wasn't going to play. You look at the receivers they have, and Tim Patrick might be the fourth, you know, might be the best fourth receiver in the NFL. Right. And that's how deep they are in that section. So when you can make a move like that and acquire some picks and then you help special teams, like with you mentioning the trade with San Francisco and special teams was something that struggled throughout the preseason, he's always looking to find different ways to make your roster deeper and at the same time acquire these picks to where you can be deeper in the future to change and overturn your roster. And that's the way his philosophy has always been. And we're seeing it in his first uh, time around cutdowns. Exactly. Who are some of the new additions on this Broncos roster that we saw at two o'clock mountain time today <laughs> that you think will make an immediate impact? You know, everybody's going to call me biased, and I'm fine with that. Because oh, just like Vaughn Miller, I love my Buckeyes. Jonathan Cooper, their second of three picks in the seventh round, is really going to turn some heads. He already did during training camp. He already did during the preseason, obviously, in what he was able to do and get after the quarterback. He's got violent hands. He's a guy that takes tremendous angles at the quarterback. I go and look at that Super Bowl year where you had Vaughn Miller, Demarcus right. Ware, and behind them you had Shaq Barrett and you had Shane Ray. Now you have Malik Reed and Jonathan Cooper behind Vaughn Miller and Bradley Chubb. Don't be surprised in that rotation if Jonathan Cooper, as this season goes on, 
is coming onto the field before Malik Reed. That is how highly they think of him. That is how well he has played. The heart issue, obviously something that everybody had their eye on, and it's a remarkable story on where he's gotten to with it. And uh, it's just like all us Buckeyes, we like to go above and beyond. But that is the number one guy I think of, and then obviously the two at the top of the draft. When Javante Williams, they get him in the second round, George Payton and company thought he was the best running back in the draft, right. and we all know how good Patrick Sertan is. Yes, we do. Okay, well, the 53-man roster is set. Teddy Bridgewater is officially the starter for week one against the New York Giants. So overall, James, what are your ex expectations for this team heading into this season? Well, Alexis, I've made stops around probably seven, eight camps throughout training camp. It's yep. great to be back to normal, you know, Jimmy talking to people in person. Jimmy Palm Trees, as I'm told on Good Morning Football for some reason by Kay Adams. But making the rounds repeatedly from general managers and coaching staffs are, God, I wish I had that secondary, or this is yeah. a playoff roster. I mean, this is a playoff roster when you look at it. It is so much deeper than it has been in years past, which everybody is saying, oh, they're calling about guys in the secondary, trade Bryce Callahan. Well, you got to remember, you are deep. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. You saw the issues there last year. Now with Teddy Bridgewater and some depth and you have talent around him, you are set up in a position, if he plays well, protects the football, defense plays the way we think they can play, this is a playoff roster and a playoff team, which a strong start will be very important, but I think Teddy Bridgewater won the job for a lot of reasons, and the big one is protecting and being accurate with the football where guys can go make plays after they catch it because they have a bunch of them. Well, James, of course, thank you so much for joining us, sharing the national perspective right. of the Denver Broncos. We appreciate you. No problem. Okay, well, coming up after the break, Lionel Bienvenu, Troy Rank, and Ryan Harris will also share their expectations for the Denver Broncos heading into the 2021 season. Don't go anywhere. Broncos Country Connected is presented by Carpet Mill Outlets. Bigger discounts, better selections. Welcome back to Broncos Country Connected. With training camp 2021 in the books and the regular season less than two weeks away, let's check in with Denver 7's Lionel Bienvenu, Troy Rank, and Ryan Harris for their biggest takeaways from the preseason and their thoughts on how this upcoming season might shake out. All right, thanks Alexis, and welcome to our Denver 7 segment brought to you by 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Well, I got Broncos insider Troy Rink here and Super Bowl 50 champ Ryan Harris as well. Ryan, you got the ring? Yeah, not junk, Lionel, <laughs> yeah. not junk. but You've uh, got to have, the, gotta <laughs> have the ring, right? All right, guys, look, preseason's over. The Broncos went 3-0. and Now, that doesn't count, right? No, the records don't count. But what does count is how you played, Troy. And the Broncos outscored the Vikings, Seahawks, and Rams. 80 to 21. The defense did not give up a touchdown in three games. Teddy Bridgewater's quarterback rating in three games, 127.6. Troy, you got to say this preseason was a success. Yes, it's encouraging for this reason. The preseason doesn't count. You're right, Lionel. But they outscored the opposition in every quarter. Also, for a team that's really struggled in September, they showed a sense of urgency in these games. So that is something I think can transfer. You settle on the quarterback position. You like some of the things you're doing up front. Defensively, Lionel, as you mentioned, this should be the strength of the team. So, yes, a lot of promising things, even though we have to see it transfer to September. Well, Ryan, Teddy was steady. No doubt about that. But a quarterback's best friend is the run game. Right. I mean, look, we saw Melvin Gordon seven yards a carry against the Rams. Javante Williams looks like a, a life size bowling ball. To try to tackle that guy. Royce Freeman broke some ankles yeah. in Seattle. Uh, will this be the key, Ryan, to success for Teddy in this offense? It really is. It's the key to winning in the NFL. You have to have a run game that keeps the defense honest. And I thought it was big that Melvin Gordon got around that right side and got a big gain. Also, as you mentioned, I mean, Javante Williams is so good, guys. That Coach Fangio said he didn't have to see him in the third preseason game. That's a rookie he's talking about. Then I don't know if Royce Freeman will be on this team because he played so well. And especially with injuries in Baltimore, he may be a piece that you can move as an asset. All right, uh, Troy, you've told me so many times on Denver 7 Sports, if the quarterback is throwing the ball 35 times, 
that is not a recipe for victory. Well, the last two years are three and 17, Lionel, when they throw 30 plus times. So you really have to focus on balance. You go back to the Carolina game last year, Houston a couple years ago. When you have that run pass balance, as Ryan knows, it sets up play action, it sets up play action boot, and it takes the pressure off the quarterback. We don't need Teddy Bridgewater to win the games. Just give him a chance where he can be nice and easy and steady, not the guy throwing 35, 40 times, Lionel. And Ryan O'Lyman love to fire off the ball <laughs> and hit somebody, right? Absolutely. Not back up in pass protection. Yeah, you get to change the linebackers before the game starts. I mean, every linebacker <laughs> wants to drop in coverage and catch a football, but they're not ready for that face-to-face -face contact. And the more you hit somebody, the more they change, Lionel. All right, now we look ahead to the Giants, guys. September 12th in the Meadowlands. And Ryan, uh, Broncos have this weekend off coming up. Now, as a former player, uh, what would you do? You had just about two weeks to get ready for game one. But do you want to get away from the game for the weekend, or do you want to study tape on the Giants and stay focused? Well, it's different for every player. For me, especially later in my career, this is when my family would actually come to town, right, after training camp. You knew you made the team. There's still a lot of young players who are nervous, right, that they might get released even after the cut date. So it's a variety of things for guys. Some guys are celebrating. Some guys are welcoming family. Other guys are sitting at their house nervous, Lionel. Yeah, all right. Troy, uh, what is the one thing you look at from the preseason uh, that gives you a good feeling going into the regular season. Well, it's simple. It's the health of Cortland Sutton and Vaughn Miller. Cortland Sutton looked reluctant in practice, but that's not who I saw on Saturday night. That big 19-yard play, also that sliding touchdown grab. He looks much closer to the 19 Pro Bowler. That's great news. Also, Vaughn Miller, listen, he knows more about ruining blocks than Lego. He looks great, Lionel. I cannot <laughs> wait to see him this season with Bradley Chubb. So health is the one thing I am really encouraged about. Yeah. This defense, Ryan, we talked about it last week here on the show. On paper, with everybody healthy, um, yeah, that's the key. But it looks as good as any team in the league. And a couple of rookies coming in that have the potential to be difference makers. Yeah, Jonathan Cooper is at the head of that list. He played fantastic in this preseason, especially considering he didn't have any OTAs. Also, Patrick Sertan continues to do little things the right way. Many people will miss that in that Rams game, there was a roll to the right. And instead of leaving his guy wide open, Patrick Sertan understood the situation, waited until the last second, and then put pressure on the quarterback for a throwaway. Those are the kinds of things when young players are playing like that, you're going to have a successful defense and team. Okay, guys, thanks. Now, every week, Denver 7 sports anchor Nick Rothschild will bring us the player's perspective, the personalities, the man behind the face mask. This week, it's rookie offensive lineman Quinn Minerts. <laughs> now, look, the advice given to most rookies is keep your head down, work hard, don't be a distraction. Well, how do you do that when your crazy workouts and your big belly have already made you famous coming in? Well, Nick shows us how Quinn used his gut to do good. <laughs> That was one of the first text messages that I got when I went in the locker room and she was she was like hey I got to see you play so excited after making his preseason debut against Minnesota the first person Quinn Minerts heard from was Elena Shelsta honestly anytime you ever meet her or see her she has the biggest smile on her face and she lights up the room Elena is the 14 year old daughter of Minerts offensive line coach from high school she suffers from a rare form of glute one deficiency syndrome there are certain weeks where she's taking 19 different things. She's getting her blood drawn at least every single week. Minerts wanted to help Elena, but was waiting for the right time. And after the senior bowl, I was like, hey, like I got a bunch of attention now. I mean, the the you know Twitter and social media, you know, went was skyrocketing. People wanted to know about me. The legend of the gut was born. He now had the nation's attention. He just had to harness it. All right, let's create a cool shirt. Let's sell it and give some money back uh, to um, Elena and the family. And it, we've had, un it was unbelievable. Did you feel the love from Broncos country? Yeah, so that, that was the main reason why we reopened it is because of the, the strength of Broncos country. It was like, hey, we want a belly shirt. We want a belly shirt. They sold a couple thousand shirts in a matter of days. All the money going to Elena's treatment. The rookie lineman drawing inspiration from her fight. You know, you have those days where you know, you're know you feeling down or you're, you know, you're really sore or whatever it is, you're having a bad day. You know, anytime you see Elena, she is smiling and whatever she's going through is definitely way worse than anything that I could be going through. So that's something that I always keep in the back of my mind to you know, keep things in perspective. 
Meinert says this is just the beginning of his philanthropy because behind that big gut is an even bigger heart. A lot of people, you know, don't know the, the personalities of, of offensive linemen, I think, as a, as a group. You know, I think we all have, you know, really, really big hearts and we love, you know, giving back. You know, it's, it's one of the most selfless positions in football. While the Belly of the Beast shirts are no longer available, if you'd still like to help Elena, go to GoFundMe.com slash Hugs for Elena to make a donation. Still to come on Broncos Country Connected, learn how one Denver Broncos cheerleader is hoping to inspire young women from her home country to chase their dreams of dancing and those iconic white boots. Welcome back to Broncos Country Connected. The Denver Broncos cheerleaders are one of the most visible aspects of the Broncos global brand. And during this year's audition process, we were reminded of the impact these women truly have, even across borders. This is the story of how one seemingly small interaction inspired a big dream for a woman from Chihuahua, Mexico. Three years ago, I was still living in Mexico and I came to Denver on vacation with my parents, and we had the opportunity to attend the Denver Broncos in Espanol event. So we went there and we had the opportunity to enjoy with all the Latin community. Broncos in Espanol is an annual fan fest held at Empower Field at Mile High, where we open up the building free for fans to really connect with our Fanaticos fan base here in Denver. DVC, Annie and DVC Angela were there signing autographs. So I went there with them to meet them and it was a beautiful experience to me because I was seeing them in person like a little girl. I just told them like, I, I wanna be like you. They told me like, you should try it. If it's your dream, go for it. And they explained me about the process, the audition process for the Denver Broncos cheerleaders. I went back to Mexico and I couldn't stop dreaming about it. And actually there was their voices were stuck in my head telling me like, go for it, you can do it. But on that time, I was just thinking like, of course, something like that is not going to happen to me. But one day I woke up and I decided to try it. I told myself like, if, if you wake up and you do or make a little step, like of course one day you will be there. You just need to work hard and go for it. Daniela was tenacious. She tried out for the first time three years ago and um, you know she had some skills to learn and she had some work to do and she reached out and she asked for feedback and she connected with the women in the audition process that she had met and why Daniela made this team is because she went for it and she worked hard and she put in the hours and she really grew as a person and as a dancer. And it was so wonderful to watch Daniela in the process of our prep classes and audition week growing um, and finding connections with the other dancers and the women in our community. And I think that that was a really fun thing to watch. I'm receiving every day messages from girls from Mexico telling me the same, like, I want to be like you. So for me, it's something really, really special because in my case, it started with Angela and Annie. And now that I'm here, it's something really beautiful that I can do the same for someone else. So in my case, my responsibility is to show them that you can do everything you want for your life, for your dreams, your goals. So a responsibility, I think it's to tell them and show them that part. The fact that Daniela met two women that represent this organization at an event and it changed the course of her life is really incredible. And I think that what's interesting about Daniela's story is that it isn't really about cheerleading. I think it relates to anybody in the sense that you see something that triggers some passion or interest in you and watching her really connect the dots and making those things happen in her life is a lesson that I think all of us could learn from. I love people here. I love that there's there are a lot of people from my city. So I, I feel like I'm in home. I can relate with people from here to Denver because 
they come here to pursue their dreams. Now that I'm part of this, and everywhere I go, I see the logo and I'm saying like, this is home, like this is a big family, so you can feel, well, I can feel that I'm in home. Keep an eye out for DBC Daniela on the sidelines when the Broncos host the Jets week three of the regular season. That'll do it for this week's edition of Broncos Country Connected. From all of us here with the Denver Broncos and Denver 7, thank you for watching.